2005. The History Channel aired a documentary on the history of the Antichrist. The only problem, of course, is that it actually avoided the history of the Antichrist. Needless to say, the showing of this religious documentary at Christmas would seem to be a very odd topic to most people and somewhat out of place with the holiday. Imagine the children switching channels on their TV seeing images of the Christ child in a manger on every channel, only to switch to the History Channel, and be shocked by gruesome medieval paintings of a satanic animal like man with horns and fangs. And to make the matter even more bizarre, despite being a four-part series and spending literally hours on the subject, the historical documentary had virtually no history within it. The documentary spent its entire time hiding, dismissing, and avoiding mentioning the actual, real, history of the Antichrist. How much history has there been? Well, for starters, the history of the Antichrist was responsible for the founding of the first Western-style democratic republic on the European continent. It was also central to the history of both the Renaissance and the Reformation. The history of the Antichrist was key to the founding of what we now know as Western democratic Europe today. It was actually incited as a catalyst in the formation of modern science, from chemistry, to physics, to biology, to even astronomy. And, it was central in the ideology that led to the very founding of the United States of America, the First Amendment of its U.S. Constitution, and even the abolition of slavery in the American Civil War, as well as the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. In fact, there are not too many major turning points in the history of Western civilization that have not been formed or affected as a direct result of the history of the Antichrist. So there's obviously a lot of historical highlights the History Channel could have covered, and it would have made for a very interesting historical documentary indeed. Instead the History Channel set forth three explanations to American audiences in order to essentially give them the impression, the Antichrist was only something in theology at the end of the world, that the idea was probably nothing more than a simple common symbol for everyone's personal sins among early Christians, and that it was an old superstition in Christianity borrowed from Zoroastrianism's dualistic beliefs in good and evil, never even hinting there has been an entire millennium of history surrounding this topic or that the history of the Antichrist has found its way to the center of virtually every major historic event we know from Western civilization, in one way or another.
Corporal, you kept your wits about you. Don't relax that caution now. The Nazi party may be gone. The Nazi thinking. Nazi training. And Nazi trickery. German lust for conquest is not dead. It's merely gone undercover. Somewhere in this Germany are the SS guards, the Schutzstaffel, the Gestapo gangsters. uniform. You won't know them, but they'll know you. Somewhere in this Germany are stormtroopers by the thousands. Out of sight, part of the mob, but still watching you and hating you. Somewhere in this Germany, there are two million ex-Nazi officials. Out of power, but still in there thinking, thinking about next time. Remember that only yesterday, every business, every profession was part of Hitler's system. Practically every German was part of the Nazi network. Guard particularly against this group. These are the most dangerous. German youth. Children when the Nazi party came into power. They know no other system than the one that poisoned their minds. They're soaked in it. Trained to win by cheating. Trained to pick on the weak. They've heard no free speech. Read no free press. They were brought up on straight propaganda. Products of the worst educational crime in the entire history of the world. Practically everything you believe in, they have been trained to hate and destroy.
imbroglio surrounding the Vatican Bank and the looting of funds from Holocaust victims and a variety of other uh, assorted activities was the focal point of a book that uh, you co-authored again with Mark Ahrens called Unholy Trinity. Uh, we've spoken about some of your other books in the past, John, but not Unholy Trinity at all. Well, Unholy Trinity essentially was the things that was centered out of my first book, The Ballara Secret. Mm -hmm. I was told when I submitted, because I had all these very high security clearances, that, um, uh, you know, my books would always have to undergo uh, review by various different agencies, the pre-publication committees. And uh, they said, no, we can't mention about the Vatican and their role in helping the Nazis, so that has to all be stricken out. You know, that just annoyed me, so of course we went and found a legal way to get all this information into the public domain. Essentially, we had uh, a very enterprising kid uh, from Britain who spoke Serbo-Croatian fluently, and he posed as a young fascist and went around and interviewed all the surviving Croatian fascist priests and tape recorded them. And uh, thinking that he was another young Nazi looking for the history of this, this wonderful thing that they had done, the priests blabbed into our tape recorder about how the Vatican smuggled all the Nazi money out, smuggled all the Nazis out, and it was devastating. I mean, the Vatican, in essence, blew the whistle on themselves. And we played the tapes back to various government agencies and said, all right, we can't censor you anymore. They've already exposed themselves. So we get permission to go ahead with the book. Really? Fascinating. Fascinating. Permit me to say how much I... is going because we are uh, the result of the Protestant Reformation, our standards of royalty who sits on the throne was settled at the time of the Reformation and there has been no public debate among elected uh, representatives about these matters. It seems that they're going to sweep them all away just because someone high up says we're going to do it. Well, that is not democracy. Well, that is not democracy. Well, that is not democracy. And I believe that the whole country should have an opportunity to express itself. And we have, of course, the insult uh, by one cardinal who said we we're only a second-rate country anyway. The, the whole thing is, it's not straightforward. We're not dealing with a straightforward issue. We're dealing with a twisted uh, presentation of this matter. We're dealing with a twisted uh, presentation of this matter.
never tried to go out and offend Catholics. I have been an opponent of the teachings of the Church of Rome. I uh, am in the historic uh, succession of the Reformers. I mean, I was far from the first person who accepted the fact that the Church of Rome was a false church and therefore was the church as depicted in the, in the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation. Now that is historic Protestantism. And I mean, I think I've proved in my political life uh, by my um, advocacy of people uh, who are Roman Catholics in their times of trouble that I have given them the best possible representation they ever had.
a deputation after deputation with me uh, from Roman Catholics uh, explaining to me what has happened and how uh, secrecy uh, and an attempt to cover over an attempt to take those who carried out these atrocious crimes against young young boys and young girls that they should be covered up and I think that is a very serious matter. Uh, that is not some Protestant saying anything about the church. That's Roman Catholic people themselves who have been severely hurt and severely damaged and uh, surely they are entitled to express their views uh, about that publicly and to say why bring the Pope uh, to our country at this time when this is going on. Well, I think he's doing, he's working hard to cl close them up uh, uh, and cover them up and I have seen and I have read uh, very carefully all the newspapers as I'm sure you've done and you have found that the vast majority of the, uh, of the news media are saying the same thing. There should be no cover up and the Pope has not helped the situation. Terror begins with Al Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. Okay, there's been some supplies. Um, in the United States and also in Britain, that you have a job in um, looking and investigating into terrorism. And when your own um, past quotes uh, about terrorism, uh, and you're obviously anticipating what I'm going to ask you, uh, seems to be an apologist for terrorism. Um, you see, um, you were quoted as saying the following in 1982, and I quote you, if it is an actor. Sure. We must pledge ourselves to support those brave men and women who at this very moment are carrying forth the struggle against British imperialism in the streets of Belfast and Derry. And you added that, what, three years later, you said, if civilians are killed in an attack on the military installation, it is certainly regrettable, but I will not morally blame the IRA for it. You stand by that. I stand by it in the context of when it was said, and if I could just have a moment to expand on that. Of course, uh, please. Uh, and if I could just jump ahead, because uh, I could just cite you. Some, uh, please. Uh, and if I could just jump ahead, because. Uh, uh, please. Uh, 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 because. Uh, because uh, Americans are asking, why do they hate us? They hate what they see right here in this chamber. democratically elected government. Their leaders are self-appointed. They hate our freedoms. Our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech, our freedom to vote and assemble and disagree with each other. They want to overthrow existing governments in many Muslim countries, such as Egypt. They want to drive Israel out of the Middle East.
They want to drive Christians and Jews out of vast regions of Asia and Africa. These terrorists kill not merely to end lives, but to disrupt and end a way of life. With every atrocity, they hope that America grows fearful, retreating from the world and forsaking our friends. Are you seriously suggesting that the U.S. should be indifferent to whether Israel survives? I think, I think that's exactly what I'm suggesting. How could that possibly be when Israel is the closest ally and when it's the only democratic state in the region? Well, I think democracy is, a, is, a, is sort of a silly more policy goal, sir. They stand against us because we stand in their way. We're not deceived by their pretenses to piety. We have seen their kind before. They are the heirs of all the murderous ideologies of the 20th century. By sacrificing human life to serve their radical visions, by abandoning every value except the will to power, follow in the path of fascism, Nazism, and totalitarianism. And they will follow that path all the way to where it ends, in history's unmarked grave of discarded lies. If you look at the history, just very briefly, if you look at the history, actually, Islam has been unique in that sense, that it's never had a clergy. It's only with modern Islamism, the Iranian revolution, for example, was unique that it, it reintroduced the idea of a, of, of a politicized clergy that were ruling in God's name. Whereas before Khomeini, uh, the Shiite Muslims, or 20% of the world's uh, Muslims, believed that no man had the right to rule in God's name until the Messiah returned. As for the 80% who are Sunnis, they've never had a clergy. Um, for their entire history. And so modern day Islamism is attempting to bring about the very thing it despises, which is Western Catholicism before the Reformation.
to me what has happened and how uh, secrecy uh, uh, and an attempt to cover over an attempt to take those who carried out these atrocious crimes against young, young boys and young girls that they should be covered up and I think that is a very serious matter. Uh, that is not some Protestant saying anything about the church. That's Roman Catholic people themselves. The whole thing is, it's not straightforward. We're not dealing with a straightforward issue. We're dealing with a twisted uh, presentation of this matter. You happen to be a member of the fascist party. Now the eccentric outsider is in power. Nicola Kukulo is the new mayor of Kieti, elected last December in a landslide vote. The man who, as mayor, now visits Kieti's schools to lecture them about the importance of cleanliness and right living is the same whose alleged views on Hitler caused a storm recently in the national press. Mayor Kukulo was quoted as saying Hitler was the most intelligent man of the century and his mistake with the Jews was not to have fried them all.